Okay, in this video, we are doing Calc BC problem set number three. Link to the problems and a playlist are in the description below. Let's take a look. Uh, we want to evaluate the integral from, nope, we just want to evaluate the, I always want them to be definite integrals. Evaluate integral one over the fifth root of two x plus seven. Uh, okay, so this, I'm definitely doing u substitution, u is two x plus seven. I'm gonna rewrite this thing with a negative exponent. Like, I mean, well, one half du is dx, but I got, I'm jumping ahead. I wanna already be rewriting. So one half integral u to the negative one fifth du plus one times the reciprocal. We're just reversing the power rule here. Uh, so we get uh, five fourths u to the four fifths plus c. And then u is two x plus seven. So uh, we end up with five eighths two x plus seven to the uh, four fifths plus c, that's it. I don't know if that's really a BC level question. I mean, it is, you'll run into problems like that. It's not like BC exclusive material though. Uh, all right, next up. Evaluate the integral from negative one to nine of x g of x dx, given g of x is h prime, h is f prime, uh, and the average rate of change of f on negative one to nine is 13. So given a whole lot of information. Uh, so first thing, g of x is h prime, so I'm just gonna rewrite our, our integral negative one to nine x h prime of x dx. That's good because this looks exactly like an integration by parts problem. So I'm gonna start setting that up. I'm gonna say that u is x and dv is h prime of x dx, which makes du b dx and v b just h of x. So we can get started and just kind of like write it out. So it'll be um, x h of x from uh, negative one to nine and then minus the integral from negative one to nine of h of x dx. So there's kind of like two problems at this point. Uh, I know that h of x is f prime. So I can say that this uh, is gonna be x f prime of x from negative one to nine. Now an issue there is that I like don't know values of uh, f prime. So I can't really do much with that other than write it down using notation. Kind of wish I had gone back and modified the problem, but I didn't. Um, and then I changed that section, second h into f prime as well. Uh, that one's not as problematic because we do have another piece of information. We know that the average rate of change of f on negative one to nine is 13. So that's like some weird piece of information. Average rate of change is just algebra one slope. So it's saying f of nine minus f of negative one over nine minus negative one is 13. Uh, nine minus negative one is 10. So we now know that f of nine minus f of negative one is just 130. Now that's important because the integral from negative one to nine of f prime of x dx is f of nine minus f of negative one, right? That's the fundamental theorem. So that part is good. Um, this first part here, I don't know, just fundamental theorem. You get nine f prime of nine minus uh, negative one times f prime of negative one. There's really nothing you can do with that. Uh, minus this 130 that we found before, uh, but here, let's use the fundamental theorem. So it's f of x from negative one to nine. Uh, let's clean this up. So we get nine f prime of nine plus, because it's minus negative, plus f prime of negative one minus f of nine minus f of negative one. What's good about that is that that's 130. So our final answer here is kind of gross. It's nine f prime of nine uh, plus f prime of negative one minus 130. There's nothing more you can do. So uh, that's what we're gonna go with. All right, let's take a look at the next. Find the particular solution, which just means solve the differential equation. Uh, to the differential equation above, passing through three uh, natural log of one fifth. All right, so uh, this is gonna be separate and integrate, right? So uh, we're gonna color code, dy dx is e to the y, and then x minus five to the third. All right, so separate, we get dy over e to the y, which I'm writing as e to the negative y dy. Don't fall into this trap of thinking that you always are gonna get natural logs when you integrate on the y side. A lot of people seem to think that. It's not true, but it does happen a lot, but not all the time, and definitely not here. Uh, integral signs. Integral of e to the negative y is negative e to the negative y. And then on the right-hand side, we get 1 fourth x minus five to the fourth plus c. So remember, c goes on the side with the independent variable, which in this case is x. Sometimes it's t. I mean, it could be anything. Um, but it's very common for it to be x or t. Uh, let's, uh, I'm gonna actually solve for c here because it's, it's never really gonna get easier. 
So x is 3, y is the natural log of 1 fifth. So let's just like write it in. Uh, so I'm replacing y with the natural log of 1 fifth. And then uh, 3 minus 5 fourth plus c. Okay, so a property of natural logs is that coefficients become exponents. So that negative in front of the natural log can become the exponent of 1 fifth. So it becomes 1 fifth to the negative first. And 1 fifth to the negative first is 5. So on the left, I'm just going to have negative e to the natural log of 5. So that's the property where exponents become coefficients. The right-hand side, we're just simplifying. Uh, one, negative 2 to the 4th is 16. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Uh, e to the natural log of whatever is just whatever, because e and natural log are inverses of each other. So e to the natural log of a is just a. In this case, e to the natural log of 5 is just 5. So on the left, we get negative 5 equals 4 and then plus c. So 16 divided by 4 is 4. Uh, so c is going to be negative 9. We're not really done though uh, because we got to you know go back and sub in. So here we have negative e to the negative y is 1 fourth the quantity x minus 5 to the fourth minus 9. Now we have to solve this thing for y. So what I'm going to do is multiply through by a negative. I'm not going to make you watch that. Just multiply through by a negative. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides, so I'm not going to make you watch, but natural log of both sides gives us negative y is the natural log of that right-hand side. Uh, now I'm going to divide through by a negative, which again, you don't have to watch. That's our final answer. y is negative natural log of 9 minus 1 fourth, the quantity x minus 5 to the fourth. Like, does that have a domain issue somewhere? Uh, almost certainly, but I don't think we need to worry about it because it's not a domain issue related to the differential equation. It's just related to the function. That's like a slightly different issue. Um, all right, let's look, a look at, uh, I believe there's one more problem in this. R is the region bounded by x equals y squared minus 1 and 2x plus y equals 1. Okay, so that's our region. If R is the base of a solid whose cross section is perpendicular to the y-axis, our semicircles, find the volume of the solid. We're going to set up by hand and then evaluate on a calculator, thankfully, because I do not want to do that by hand. All right, uh, I'm going to start off by kind of like sketching this region. Uh, so y squared minus 1 is like, it's a parabola that opens to the right. But I mean, just like if x is 0, you get negative 1. And then uh, you're just going to get bigger values. So it kind of looks like this. Um, 2x plus y equals 1. I mean, if, if x is equal to 0, then y is definitely equal to 1. And then this thing has a negative slope. So I mean, I'm, I'm going to do this. Uh, so that I'm also going to solve for X because Y squared minus one is solved for X. So I'm going to say that, uh, this is X is one minus Y divided by two. All right. So now we're just doing our, our like basic problem, I guess. Uh, I need to know where these intersect. So Y squared minus one equals one minus Y over two. I want to multiply by two and move everything to one side. So that gives me two Y squared plus Y minus three is zero. I'm going to start to factor this thing. So I'm going to do like two Y and Y, and then I need to, do like uh, either three and negative one or negative three and positive one. I know that it's three and negative one, so I'm gonna say plus three minus one. Uh, just check that really fast. You get minus two y plus three y is y, so good. So that means that they intersect at y equals negative three halves, that's the bottom, and y equals one, that's the top of the range. All right, so we need to like set this up. We're going to calculate s, which in this case is right take away left. Um, so when you're doing dy, it's right takeaway left. When you're doing dx, it's top takeaway bottom. Um, these problems are pretty formulaic. Like you don't have to think about them too much. Uh, it's always like sketch the region, find the intersection points, figure out which one's like on top or bottom or to the right or left. Um, and then you just go from there. So in this case, s is going to be right takeaway left. So that's one minus y over two minus the quantity y squared minus one. And then semicircles, this you, it's well worth memorizing. When you're doing volume with cross sections and semicircles, it's going to be pi over 8, the integral of s squared, and then in this case, dy. So we're going from negative 3 halves to 1, s squared dy. I'm going to uh, rewrite that thing as, uh, like, I like to substitute back in for s, even though, like, I mean, technically the work is probably good enough uh, because we did clearly define what s is. I don't like it. I don't like to have S and DY. I think that looks a little weird. So I rewrite it like this, grab a calculator, punch all this in. I'm going to go with the decimal answer because I think it's easier to write. So uh, 1.278. And there you go. All right. So that's the problem set. 
I hope this was helpful and good luck.